share i would also share uh, brief thing general instructions regarding uh, right, some some general instructions uh, so I, I mean most of you are giving dnb exams and you are pretty much aware of the type of the pattern of exam the questions that are asked right so it's it's usually very very specific questions so read the instructions very carefully now if you see uh, and and this keeps changing okay now don't go with the mindset that this is constant year on year we have seen changes happening over the years okay so you don't even never know this time what it is like for example this particular exam you have to write in five different answer sheets and you have to write very specific so part a is two questions part b is two questions similar so don't uh, answer start answering your questions without reading the guidelines that has been given okay and if they have asked you to write it in order, it, you have to write it in order. If they have asked you to write uh, two, two answers only in each booklet. You have to do that because mind you, these booklets are going to different examiners for correction. So even if you have written the perfect answer for say question number three in booklet one, the examiner doesn't even know what question that was. So he can't evaluate you for that. All right. So that that's, that's the sad part. So they've asked you to write two answers only like answer question, answer to question number one and two in booklet A, you need to do that. You, you just because you know answer three best, for example, don't go and write that in booklet A. Okay. And uh, uh, all these start now. If you, if you look into, if you read into each of these, okay, do not leave any blank pages between two answers. Very critical. A commonest mistake which many of us do is we start writing an answer. We feel, okay, there are some things that I'm not remembering right now. Let me come back and write later on. So I will leave a couple of pages, then answer the next. Uh, particular question after that leaving enough space that I feel I will come back and write and later on you may forget or you may not have time. Now that has happened in many of the cases where we have seen once the answer sheets you have received back after correction and those candidates who could not make uh, it through the exams who have failed can apply for uh, Xerox sheets of their answers to know where they went wrong, right? They have got it and realized that certain questions have not been corrected. Now, even after that, you you file an appeal to get those corrected. It is not corrected because you are left blank answers sheets in between, right? So never do that. And uh, this particular thing, start an answer on a fresh page. So if you have finished, even say in the upper third of, of, of that particular page, don't start in the next question immediately, okay? You can put a uh, dash mark and start your answer to the from the next page why is that important again uh, because some examiners have an overview of what you have written before they really mark you right they don't actually sit back and read into each word that you have written so overall they would see how the answer is written now if you're immediately starting the next that may that part may not be considered at all okay so don't do that whatever these and these are the instructions which are given if you are not following instructions you are taking onus if something goes wrong. Okay. And the last one, draw table diagram, which are very appropriate. That's not an instruction as such, but that is a general uh, guideline for you to get good marks. So read the question properly. Now, for example, why you want to read the question properly is because you uh, you want to know what, what is the exact question has been done. Now, in DNB, all the questions are very, very specific. Okay. Uh, it's, it's been ages now. It's, it's more than a decade where a non-specific question was asked. Okay. It's a very specific question. Now, for example, if you read this question, 10 mark question, all right. Tabular difference between septic and hypovolemic shock. Briefly describe management of septic shock. Nowhere have they asked you what is a what is the what is the uh, definition of a hypovolemic shock or what is the definition of a shock, what are the types of shock. Okay. So what usually happens is you would have written, read about shock as such, or whatever, whichever topic. Now, this is just an example. You would have read about that topic very nice. You would have well prepared for that, and you are very uh, happy that that question is asked. And you will start writing uh, things just because you know that, right? But that is not asked at all. So when you write brilliantly that, the examiner may actually get irritated because that is not asked. What is asked is tabulate the difference between septic and hypovolemic shock. Now, the answer to this has to be a table. If you write one paragraph for septic shock, one paragraph for hypovolemic shock to tell the difference, again, the examiner might not consider your answer. I mean, you may still get one or two marks, even with the perfect answer. That is because of mercy because of leniency that the, 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 the examiner is giving you. You are asked to tabulate. It is your duty to tabulate. It has to come in a table format. Okay. Now that these are the certain things that in the pressure or 
because of whatever time concern or you you do not read the question properly and you miss out right and it is so happened that this question you know everything you knew everything but you were not able to really put it on words in put it in a particular table and you would have lost now what is seven marks what you would have otherwise got say four or five marks for a good well documented table you are only ending up with one or two marks even though all the material was same right and describe management of septic shock for three marks now they have asked you briefly describe management of septic shock for three months there is no point in writing four or five pages on this right it is asked for three months you keep the answer as such just because you know things doesn't mean you need to put it and management includes investigations and treatment now i keep we keep telling this repeatedly in um, almost all exams do not forget if they have asked you management examiner in his mind has given has kept one mark or one and a half mark for investigation one and a half marks for treatment or whatever it may it may differ uh, but at least some marks for investigation some marks for treatment and if even if your entire treatment is right and not written investigations that particular marks is gone unfortunately so read your question properly see what the examiner has asked see the instructions take time don't be in a hurry to write it okay if you actually attempt a dnb paper you none of the candidates have a problem in time that is for sure because since they are very specific questions asked and not a generalized questions you need to write appropriately and time is never a concern here so uh, even if you know all 10 if you can smash all 10 questions everything you are per perfectly prepared even then you will have enough time to write that because uh, the thing that is asked is a very very uh, small uh, thing of the overall part right so that's that's the disadvantage plan your answer now uh, how do you want to really answer your answer okay yes you could start writing in paragraphs and paragraphs but mind you think from the examiner's perspective okay the examiner has to uh, um, evaluate a certain number of papers in a day and all these who are these examiners these examiners are all uh, highly trained highly experienced senior professors of various medical colleges and 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 dnb institutes right so do you really expect them to sit back and read each of your words like a kindergarten teacher? The answer is no. So the examiner is overall evaluating a candidate, whether this candidate is good enough to pass or not. So even the, so that's why we see those who have passed out of 100, they get 56, 57, 58, sometimes 60 maybe. Those who have failed get about 42, 43, up to 45. So the, 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 the range is very narrow. Okay. In other words, what happens is if you've written an answer well, you'll get six to seven marks. If you answer, write an answer a little badly, you'll get three to four marks. That's the only range. So you would want to impress the examiner that you're a good candidate, that you deserve to pass, right? So, and wh what is the best way, right? Uh, more systematically, of course, cleanliness, neatliness for sure. But more importantly, uh, write in, um, in, in lines, in the sense, um, in uh, points. Do not write paragraphs there, okay? As much as possible, try to put in flowcharts or diagrams. Now, I know some of you may find it difficult to really draw a diagram, but don't bother about the neatness of a diagram. So, any diagram, no matter who draws it, no matter how bad you are at drawing things, it still gives more information and still gets you more, fetches you more marks than a brilliantly explained paragraph, for sure, okay? So, don't be hesitated that uh, you don't know to draw certain things. Okay, so you would be able to and flow charts, whatever possible. Okay, when you write flow charts, so even if you miss out on some things, it's okay. You 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 can't make out exact flow charts, and that's not what the examiner wants. Also, he just wants to know whether you are methodical about certain things, and that's all uh, that is required. Okay, for example, look into this question: How will you manage gastrointestinal type three B fracture of distal femur? Very 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 specific question. Okay, what is the and ask for three marks. So thing is, open fracture, you can really write pages and pages together. Anyone, I mean, any candidate who is giving a DNB final exam can write a lot of pages on this. But what is asked? How will you manage gastrointestinal type three B? And that for three marks. Now three marks, you know, you have to write investigation, you have to write treatment, right? So automatically, you you in your mind you're categorizing this. Okay, the basic minimum is for investigation will be one mark, treatment will be two two, two marks. But two marks, what are you going to write? That's it. So you are only going to write acute management and what are you going to do? Second step. Okay, compare pros and cons of angular stable device and dynamic compression for distal femur fractures. Now. Imagine you don't know anything about, uh, about this. Imagine, okay, this, this is a very straightforward question, but imagine you don't know, but still you are just writing pros and cons in a table format, making a little systematic method. You are going to get even one or two marks out of the four marks here. The maximum possible is four. Approach to bicondylopus fracture. This is where a flowchart will help. 
bicondylar hopper fracture so clinical diagnosis what are you going to do what are you going to look out for what are the investigations next aromark investigations investigations you are obviously going to get an x-ray you're going to get a ct scan okay then you are going to see the type of fracture now type of fracture type 1 this is the treatment type 2 this is the treatment type 3 this is the treatment okay that's it that's an approach to bicondylar hopper now you may know about complications you may know about the surgical uh, uh, approaches you may know about different devices nothing is asked you are only asked about the overall approach and only for three months. So look into how much marks it is asked for. So the same question is answered differently if it's asked for say five, six marks versus if it's asked for three marks. So look into that because time is again critical. Uh, for a three mark question, you can't be writing uh, 10 pages, right? So because even if you have the best, you have written exact ditto of what is required. It's a three mark question. The maximum mark you're going to get is two, two and a half. You're not going to get three on three. So there's no point in wasting time on that. Okay. Look into open question versus specific question now. Very, very unlikely you're going to get an open question. Now, what is an open question is that? Now, for example, question number one, classification and management of ankle fracture. This is an open question for 10 marks. You don't know how much marks is for classification, how much marks is for management, you don't know. Now, this type of question is not asked in current DNB for sure. Previously, it used to be this way, but now they are going to specify each question is how much mark and within that also what you're supposed to answer, okay? For example, what will be asked now is classify ankle fracture. Same question, you see how differently it has been asked over the years, okay? Classify the ankle system in bracket, give any one system because there are so many classification systems, give any one system. So you are free to write whichever system you feel you are good at. Okay. Doesn't matter. That need not be the best. Now, for example, th there need not be log answers. If you think you are good at AO, you can write AO. If you think there is, you, you want to write Weber system, you can write Weber system. No, no, whatsoever. Because the, you have been asked to write any one system. Okay. And four marks. Now, mind you, you may know two, three, four systems here. Okay, if you're a good, um, and, and, you, and you feel that, okay, I will write two or three different systems and I will try to impress the examiner, only wasting your time. The first one, whatever written is, is going to be corrected, obviously, right? So there's no point in trying to impress the examiner this way by trying to show off how much you know. You have been asked to write one system, you write one system, that's it. And whatever the first you write is what is going to be considered for four marks. The next question is for six marks, how will you manage? Supination external rotation injury. Again, a very, very, very specific question. Again, management includes investigation and treatment. You're going to get X-rays. You're going to get CT scans. You uh, initially you may require uh, to put on a uh, spanning external fixator, and once you do that, depending on what fractures he has. So for lateral malar fractures, posterior malar fractures, medial malar fractures, and anterior malar fractures, you're going to divide your answer into that and write. Again, a flow chart makes things much easier. So look into again open or specific. Most likely they are specific, very unlikely you are going to get an open question, but if you get, then you need to be prepared for that also. But more more often than not, I think uh, we are, uh, the, the, the board is not going to go back. It is only going to go forward. So you're not going to get any open questions. Okay. Questions in trauma are very easy. In fact, you don't need to spend much time, much time uh, reading for trauma also, because, because what questions can be asked? You can, you can get a regional question in a sense, Calcaneal fracture, fracture neck of femur, scaphoid fracture, proximal femur, like something, some specific sub region of trauma. You may get a question on surgical approach, very less likely, but you may, some approaches are important. Most questions are protocol based management. So, how will you manage a polytrauma? How will you manage a floating knee? How will you manage a flail chest? Or how will you manage a type 3 B gastroenteritis? How will you manage a vascular disease? So, these are protocol based management. Again, again, very open questions there. Some questions with respect to basic sense and pathology, like fracture healing uh, or, or, or the different parameters which are required on, on the hormones uh, on fracture healing. All those questions, uh, different. again, less likelier. Recent advances topics could be asked, uh, which you discussed. So these are the only set of questions that you can, can be asked in trauma. Okay. Very unlikely, but instrument implant based questions have started to come in the last two to three years, is what we are seeing. Okay. Like BDSF was asked, FNS was asked. Um, variable angle locking plates were asked uh, uh, a certain couple of years back, right? So, which was usually not asked before, have been asked to come. Now, again, these are all, almost all these are covered, and you know it can come, right? So, you can form a generic answer. Generic answer means no matter what area is asked, I, if it's a regional trauma question, I'm going to answer on these headlines. I'm going to classify it investigations, treatment, conservative. Now, in treat, now classification, if, if they ask you classification, Investigations management is the question that they will ask for all 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 uh, subtypes. So it includes investigations. Investigations in trauma is simple. X-ray for all patients, two views, including adjacent joints. Okay, uh, two views, two joints, orthogonal views. Okay, and then you are getting uh, CT scan, 
in almost all fractures if it is a periarticular injury and MRI in some uh, things. You can write MRI, you can write not, not investigation of choice, but could delineate uh, some injuries like ligamentous injuries. So that's that's standard in all. Okay. Um, angio, CT angio or MRI angio depends on if the, the patient has a vascular injury. Some conditions they may ask you whether there's a vascular injury, you can talk about that, right? Uh, treatment, all patients start from conservative, no matter what fracture we're talking, including fracture and neck of famous. Conservatively has to be managed in some patient if they're not fit for surgery or if the patient doesn't want surgery. If the patient is too unfit for surgery. So this you write about that as a first line. In surgical, it could be with K wires, could be with external fixator, could be with plate, could be with nail, arthroplasty, and arthroplasty could be with the uh, hemi replacement, total replacement, or excision arthroplasty in some cases, or arthrodesis. So that's that's all you could do in trauma. So depending on what region you're talking of, you're going to mix and match things and, and talk about this, right? Um, and then complications most likely is asked. So if complications are asked, always divide into immediate and delayed. So immediate complications are set, certain complications that happens immediately after trauma or immediately after the surgery. And then you may have a delayed complications, which are say some months or some years down the line. Okay. Delayed or complications, all of them can go into non-union, malunion, and periodical injuries will go into secondary arthritis. Okay. Infection is the immediate complication. It's not, not necessarily a delayed complication. So these this is how systematically you will write your answer. If it is surgical approach, again, your general generic way of how you're going now, mind you, they may ask you a surgical approach, which you don't know at all. In the sense, you don't know the approach per se, but you know which area of the body it belongs to, right? Now, example, they asked you, uh, say, uh, frosh approach. Okay, frosh approach, you know it's for the knee, but you don't know the exact place. You know it's somewhere on the lateral side, right? Draw a simple diagram on the lateral side. You, you draw it. Okay, even if it's not perfect, you're going to get some marks for that. So if you write your answer as what are the surface markings? So what are the landmarks? And surface markings, most of them are bony. So you know on the lateral side what bony structures are there. The skin incision, you write from this point to this point. The, so what is the superficial plane? Superficial plane and subcutaneous tissue you need to dissect. The deeper plane is between which and which muscle. If you know the plane, if you do not know the plane, you can write whatever muscles you know coming around that area. Okay. And whether the approach has an intramuscular plane or internamous plane. Most of the approaches, mind you, do have an intramuscular plane. So you can write yes. And it also has an intramuscular plane. There are very, very less approaches that directly go through a muscle and not an intramuscular plane. Okay. So you may write that. And whether extension of approach is possible. Again, answer will be yes for most. Very few approaches which you cannot extend. Okay. So if you divide your answer into these uh, headlines, Again, uh, even if you don't know anything about the approach, you are going to get those three or four marks if it is a 10 mark question, okay? And write the complications of that particular approach because any surgical approach has its own complications. You can have damage, you can have infection, you can have damage to the surrounding neurovascular structure, you can have damage to any of the ligaments or articular cartilage, all those things. So all the structures in that particular approach, uh, any, any tissue for that matter may get injured and you may have uh, wound healing complications. So that's how you would write uh, this one. Uh, for protocol based, like how do you treat a floating knee? How do you treat a, a flail chest? All those. Since they have asked you management, investigations, you can obviously think of investigation. Again, investigation and trauma are very, very simple. It has to be X-ray, X-ray, CT, MRI, plus or minus ultrasound, plus or minus CT injury. These are the only investigations that you can think of in trauma. There's no other investigation that will uh, come into picture, right? So think of that and treatment since they have asked you protocol based question, it has to be a flowchart. Draw something in flowchart. Don't think that you do not know the exact flowchart. doesn't matter. Draw something in that you will be able to get good marks. Okay. Now, for example, same question that was asked uh, for Ribua. And if they had asked you, how do you control pelvic bleeding? Now imagine you don't know anything in pelvic bleeding. You know that, forget this. Now this is an, this is from a journal article, right? And this is a, this is a good one. But if you don't know anything, you know that first step is what pelvic binder. Put pelvic binder. Patient uh, became normal. Patient is still ongoing shock, right? So this is on left side. On the right side, you're continuing, right? On ongoing shock, external fixator. Again, normal, ongoing shock. Ongoing shock, laparotomy. Normal, ongoing shock. Ongoing shock, preperitoneal pelvic packing. Normal, ongoing shock. Ongoing shock, rebo. Simple. So even if you didn't know anything of this, you could put in a simple flowchart and and do. Okay. So. Read your question, see what the examiner wants to know and write appropriately. That's that's what I'm, uh, I would like to tell. Okay. So do not hesitate. Do not leave any questions. Now, trauma questions are very, very simple. Do not leave any questions. Even if you don't know anything uh, about that particular topic, you should be still be able to write investigation, some part in management, right? Don't leave, right? 
So good luck, uh, all of you, for example. I'm pretty sure all of you will do great. So 